Welcome to this quick video tutorial on how to render point clouds in Rhino. In this video I'm going to be using a point cloud that I created in Polycam and for this I'm just going to download and export this out from Polycam as a PLY file. Now you don't have to do this in Polycam, you can get it from other sources but I found that PLY or PTS file are usually the best for this because they come with all the points and also a colour value for each of those points which will be useful when we get into rendering it later. So once you've got that, we're going to go to Rhino and we're going to import it in by going to File, Import, locating that point cloud file that we have, and then hitting Open, and then just matching up the units to our file units as well. Now you might find as mine is here, it comes in very small. This usually depends on the software you made it in and sometimes the scale values can be a bit off. So usually I just hit the scale button hit enter to center it and then scale it up by a hundred or a thousand just to get it to a nice size and there you can see I've now got my file in here. It looks like a complete mesh but if I zoom in you can see it's made up of lots and lots of little points and there's actually probably around a million or two million separate points in this file that we can see here and I'm just rotating it just to align it nicely to the ground. Now once this comes in it might be that you actually want to use this in your renderings and you might want to have it as the backdrop of an image or as its own piece which can capture light, capture shadows in a unique way. Now what you'll find with point clouds is actually there's no specific sort of volume or surface data that comes with them. They're just made up of a series of points which are essentially vectors or coordinates that exist in your Rhino file. But if we go to render them for example, so if I kind of zoom in a little bit on here go into render and just click on the render preview button there. You'll find as it renders out we actually don't see anything at all. Now the reason that this is because points don't have any kind of data to render. There is essentially a little trick you can do where you can click on the post effects, go down to the points and clouds option and tick that box and it will render them out in this way but I find that it's a little bit washed out and we're not getting any shadows, it can't catch light in any ways. So I'm going to go through a few techniques here where we can actually physicalize some of these points creating bits of geometry that kind of stand in as a placeholder for some of the points which are then able to capture light and we're able to render them out in our scene. This is quite a sort of stylized method but might have an application for some of the renders you're doing. So to do this I'm just going to close off that point effect there and we're going to close this down and hit no for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up Grasshopper to allow us to start to create some physical points on this surface using my point cloud as a reference for that. So to do that we're just going to type in Grasshopper into my command line and we're going to open that up like so. Now we're just going to make a brand new document in Grasshopper. And we're going to start by just collecting the data of this point cloud. Now to do that you can just double click on the main kind of slate there to open up the search menu and if you type in point cloud into that you can find the point cloud parameter like so. And if we select our point cloud then right click on this point cloud and hit set one point cloud there essentially it will link these two together and depending on the speed of your computer it might take a little bit of time but once it's done you'll see the points are slightly chunkier in this view now and if we select it here they'll go green to show us that it's linked to our grasshopper file and if we hover over that you can see there on the little p value of the point cloud it tells us how many points we have in there and we've essentially got around 2 million 900,000 points so a lot of points that are contained within this point cloud now I'm not going to be able to render all of these because that's going to seriously sort of crash my computer. But we can actually take a few of them out and try to physicalize those as physical bits of geometry that we can render. And we have a few tools to be able to do that in Grasshopper. Now these are all quite simple so if you've never used Grasshopper before please don't let that kind of detract you from using it here. All we're going to do is click on the vector tab and we're just going to find these two here. We've got the reduce point cloud and we've got the point cloud attribute. So we're going to click on the reduce point cloud, drop that in, and we're going to click on the point cloud attribute and click that in as well. Now to start with, this little node here can essentially take our point cloud data and reduce it to a number of points that we specify. So all I'm going to do is just take one of these little panel nodes here we're going to start with quite a low number, so I'm just going to take 100 points. So we're going down from 3 million to 100, so a lot less here. So we're severely reducing it in this case, and I'm going to plug in my point cloud 
into there, I plug in that number into this little S samples option, and what we'll get is a reduced point cloud of only 100 points there. You can kind of see it, they're in green, so they're quite hard to see on this green mesh, but if you kind of hover over there, you can see it kind of randomly selects it from across my point cloud. Now what we can actually do with that is I can then plug this point cloud into my point cloud attributes node and it will break it up into the point cloud. It will have a list of all of those separate points and where they're located. We've got the colors of each of them as well. We can start to use this to essentially reconstruct them into other pieces of geometry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make each of these into its own little disk which is then going to have a color of whatever the original point was in my point cloud. So to do that we're going to go to the curve first and we're going to take the circle option and we're going to take our list here which is essentially a list of all of our points there and we're going to plug it into the P option here which is essentially the base of each of these circles, the kind of starting point of that circle. Then for the radius of the circle, I'm then going to create a copy, just control C, control V here of this panel. And let's say we'll give it a radius of five here to start with. I'm not sure how big this model is yet, so we'll plug this in and see. And we're essentially just going to plug it in to that thing. Now I've got a little number that's rotated up there, but we can put it into the radius there. And there you can see that now we've got these little red circles that have just kind of cropped up across our mesh with that radius of five and they're relatively big for now but I think I'll keep it like that so we can see it for the purpose of this tutorial. Now it might be at this stage you actually want to make a few more so we can always go back to that original reduction of the point cloud and add in a higher number so if I add in 500 here like so you'll see it will add 400 more there to increase that number as well. So we can play around with the amount that we want in our scene. Now once we've made them into circles, as you can see there, by just selecting that node and they've gone green, we can also give them a surface just by going to the surface tab and selecting this boundary surface here. So all that takes is to take the circle, plug it into the surface, and it will create a series of surfaces from my circles here. So we're building these up now into little disks and you can kind of see them here just floating on the surface. Now what could be quite handy and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select the original point cloud we've got and you can see I've kind of got it just below this menu like so and we're going to hide it here. Now it will take a little bit of time but these grasshopper elements will pop back up again and actually I want to click on this point cloud here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click off the preview as well. That way we're just left with our reduced point cloud and our disks so it's a little bit easier to see what's happening here but essentially we've reduced it down to 500 points and we've given each of those 500 points a kind of boundary and we've given it a surface in there as well now currently this surface hasn't got any color it's just a sort of surface model that's just a sort of shape based upon this circle and this radius here from our kind of original point cloud deconstruction here we also have this color node and we can actually use this to recolor our new disks here with the color of the original point which you can kind of see in the middle of each of them. To do this we're going to double click and we're going to type in the word custom like so and we're going to open up that custom preview option. In that we're going to plug the surface into the geometry and we're going to take the color here and we're going to plug it into this little M which stands for material. What that would do is you can kind of see here is it's now given a color to each of my little disks here. So they now have a unique color based upon the color of the material of the original point. And so if I just move this out of the way you can now see we've got a sort of reduced point cloud of all of these little disks here. Now what this is really good for and what we can have a go at now is if I then create a new plane in my scene Let's just make a big plane below all of these. Let's make it quite large. And we're just going to move it directly below these, like so. And then also what I'm going to do is we'll just minimize our grasshopper file for a second. We're going to go to the lights. We're going to make a little light here. And let's just move it just hovering just above the top of the image here, like so. Now we've got a light and we've got our points here and if we go back to that render option and we hit on that render preview button now what you'll find is because we've made these into physical pieces of geometry they will start to render out and here we can see we're actually getting all of those dots rendering out 
with the light that I'm casting on them. Now the reason they're a little bit overexposed is because in my render settings by default you'll have the skylight turned on. So if we go back to render, render properties there, I'm just scrolling down. We're going to turn that skylight off. I'm going to turn the sun on instead. And then under this render tools, just under the sun settings, and we're going to click on manual controls and we're just going to make that sort of slightly lower in the sky. So it's just a sort of strong sunlight. And we're going to zoom in a little bit and then we're going to do another render preview just to see what that looks like again. And here you can see we're now getting all of my points and we're getting shadows cast on top of them as well. So we're actually sort of physicalizing these points and allowing them to cast shadows back on the scene. Now this can work really well as well if you then take your light and let's take the light here, we'll go into the properties and let's make this a really bold color like a bright red for example. And we'll go back to the render preview there. And what you'll find is that red will actually cast on the points as well. So they'll start to pick up color of other, other objects in the scene. So it's a really nice way of essentially taking your point cloud and all these little unrenderable points and then we're just making them into physical geometry which we can then render back in the scene again. Now where you can use this and what we'll do is I'm going to set up a camera just sort of looking face down and I'll just save that out there like so. Um, what we can also do with this is if we go back to our grasshopper file we could actually then say actually I kind of want a few more points in the scene so let's really up this it's up to 2000 now so we're getting a lot more and you'll see it takes a little bit of time but they'll kind of load in again if we go back to that render preview we can then re-render that out and it will start to kind of take more of the form of the original piece of geometry we had as well so you'll find it will take a little bit longer to render out the more points you have but there we can see we've now got all of our points they are casting nice shadows on the ground. They're picking up the light from those other objects as well. So this is just a really fun way of essentially taking your point clouds and turning it into something renderable. Now there are other things you can do with this. We can always switch out this kind of circle geometry for other shapes if we want to as well. We could construct our kind of own custom shapes to then take the point of those points we could turn them into actual objects as well I would sort of be wary of turning them into 3d objects because the more you have in your scene you'll find the slower and slower your computer gets you don't want to make two million cubes for example because your Rhino file will definitely crash unless you have a super quick computer to run it so always be wary of how many you're making but this is just a quick example of how you can take your point clouds and starting to turn them into something a little bit more useful that you can then use as the background of your scenes or ways of rendering other elements of your projects or different ways of looking at some of the bits in your scenes. Now in Grasshopper as well there are lots of other point cloud tools. Um, if you type in point cloud into here you can find these located in there. There's ways of cutting contours through them and also cutting sections. So there's lots of different ways you can start to play around with these objects. So do sort of feel the need to bring them in, see what you can make with them. And this was just a quick example of how you can start to kind of render those elements in the scene. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you want to watch any other videos on rendering or creating visuals in Rhino, Grasshopper or V-Ray, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.